Good day everyone, welcome to another edition of the Complete Sports Update. Uh, this is the show where we bring to you the latest and trendy stories in the world of sports. My name is Abib Kurangan. I'm not alone in the studio. I have with me Adebo Yamosu. Together we shall be taking you through the rounds as far as sports is concerned. Uh, this week's episode on Complete Sports Update will be on the review of some matches played across the Europe Top 5 leagues, uh, starting with Liverpool's visit to Manchester City at the Etihad Stadium. Chelsea were severely dealt with by Newcastle United at the St James's Park. Arsenal recorded a 1 0 victory over Brentford at the GTA Community Stadium with a goal scored by the man who has heavily been criticized ever since his move to the Emirates and he is no other than Kai Havertz. We will also take a trip down to Italy where Victor Simon inspired Napoli to an away victory against Atalanta in Bergamo. We will then wrap it up with uh, the underdog stories of the two teams in the German Bundesliga and the Spanish La Liga starting with Bayer Leverkusen under the tutelage of Xabi Alonso and the Catalan club, not Barcelona this time around, but Girona upsetting the odds in La Liga. Can these two teams bring up the surprise come the end of the season? This is the review on Complete Sports Update. Welcome back to the show, boy. Yes, uh, you know, following the November international break, finally the club football is back. And what a way to begin with, uh, you know, with the match watering clash at the Etihad Stadium between Manchester City and Liverpool. And it ended all square. And, uh, you know, for the first time in 23 games, Manchester City actually dropped a point at home this season so this and the encounter over there in manchester what do you have to say about that in general well uh, let me start by saying good day to our viewers it's good to be back on the show once again well for me the encounter at the etihad between manchester city and liverpool didn't really live up to the hype the expectation we we expected if you look at past encounters between both teams, I think it was a bit uh, cagey, probably because uh, we just came back from the international break. Uh, Liverpool rode their luck for most part of the game. They, they came back 10 minutes to the end of the game to, to grab a draw uh, from the game. I think it, it, was, it was a good result for Klopp and his, uh, and his boys and to stop Manchester City from extending their unbeaten run at the Etihad. Well, if you look at it, probably you will say it was a fair result. That's my take on, on the game. It was a fair result from the Liverpool's perspective mm? or a bad result from the Manchester City's end? Well, if you compare the, the chances uh, created by both teams, we will say uh, Liverpool were, were lucky to, to gain a point from the game. Uh, Manchester City didn't really create much chances in the game compared to, to if you compare the, their performance in the Champions League match played uh, this week against uh, RB Leipzig, where, where they came back from 2 0 down to they deserve more from the game. For Liverpool, they can say, well, fair result for them. At least picking a point from a title rubber was a good one for them. Okay, so yes, another encounter, you know, with another title contender in Arsenal, you know, at the GT Community Stadium. You know, it was actually a doggy affair, you know, between uh, Brentford and Arsenal. And finally, uh, Kai Havertz actually rose up to the occasion and uh, scored with, uh, you know, them just a fantastic error, you know, after so many backlashes from. Uh, you know, both the fans of the club and also from the rival fans, you know, blasting at it as decision to sign uh, the man. Um, the man actually, you know, gave them the three points and, you know, put Arsenal back to the top of the table with social media users actually terming the big uh, elephant back <laughs> to the top of the table. So, do you think uh, Arsenal's chances of uh, winning the Premier League has been boosted, you know, by the results of Liverpool? And Manchester City earlier. Well, uh, you, do, you don't win. You don't win a Premier League, a league <laughs> by just winning a, a game. It's a marathon. You play 38 matches. That is why it's quite different from when you play in a cup competition or the Championship, for example. If you play in a knockout competition, once you make a mistake, you're out. But league is a marathon. It's 38 matches. 
so there are a lot of factors you need luck injuries squad depth to to win the league so it's still a long way to go in my own opinion but for Arsenal uh, it was a good one for them the, the GTEC stadium is a difficult place to to win we saw big big teams like Manchester City Chelsea Liverpool struggling at the ground so coming out of a Digitech stadium with three points against a, a difficult uh, Brentford side uh, should be a big Mirabo star for Mikel Ateta and his boys. Okay, so finally in England, you know, uh, that same day, Chelsea, your, let me just say your favourite club also, mm -hmm. were actually defeated at the St. James's Park and, you know, against Newcastle United. You know, let me just say, again, problems. And, you know, it's some words are surprising, you know, that a team, you know, coming back from the international break after uh, the, 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 the 4-0 draw against Manco now because the first half looked at promising that Chelsea can actually pick up the three points. Well, I think that is expected when you have a, a young team. You know, if you look at the Chelsea team, probably if you take out Thiago Silva and a couple of uh, other guys, most of the guys in the team are experienced lads. So when you are building a team, you expect, you expected a, this kind, that kind of performance, inconsistent performance from the from the players. I think uh, just like Mauricio Pochettino said, they will learn from it and build on it in future. So. We just hope Chelsea will actually build on it from the um, in the future because this season has actually been a learning curve for these uh, for these teams and uh, you know the faithfuls of uh, Chelsea will hope that next season will be much more better although no one is writing them off this season they might actually you know bring up uh, another uh, what's it called angle from their own game uh, so now in Italy uh, Napoli actually uh, faced uh, Atalanta in uh, in the city of Bergamo and you know so for me it was actually a surprising win against uh, Atlanta although they haven't been high flying though but you know with uh, Nap uh, Victor Osimi actually starting from the bench and he came on to supply an assist for the winning uh, for the winning goal and if Elmas actually scoring uh, uh, the goal for 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 the uh, Napolitans and they actually climbed up uh, the, 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 the table. So what do you have to say as regards to that game, most especially with the first game of the manager, Walter Mazai, coming back for a second stint with the defending champions? Well, it was a, a good start for Walter Mazai. You know, when you have a... It's very difficult to come up against, against a team who has a new coach. You understand? The boys will be motivated. Everybody will want to impress the new coach, you understand? And he's someone who knows the team very well. I think he's back in the team for, for his, a third stint, you understand? So, uh, Victor Osime, having Victor Osime back in the team, uh, uh, give them a, a big boost too. And you, you, you saw his assist for the, for the second goal scored by Elmas. Atalanta have been a, one of the well, bookie teams. In the in the Italy in the Syria for the past two three seasons now, they have a good coach in uh, uh, Gasperini. Yes. They have some good players, Adimona Lukman and some other guys. So for Napoli to pick a win in a difficult uh, ground that is the Jewish Stadium in Bergamo, I think they need to bid on that in subsequent games. And with Osimhen back in the squad, you can actually see the best of uh, expect the best. From Napoli, just like he did when they won the title last season. Okay, so finally on the show now, uh, you know there have been some teams actually, you know, pulling up the surprise. You know, you can still say it's still early days, but you know it's actually been you know fantastic from their own end. You know, starting with Javier Leverkusen under uh, Xabi Alonso and also Girona. You know, surprisingly, also you know I think they are now. They've dropped one place off the table. They are now second tied on points with Real Madrid on 35 points. And you know, surprisingly, with the, 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 the score that they had, you know, they are still grinding out the results. Only drop points against Atletica Bilbao in their last 
at game and also by Leverkusen this season you know they've you know so many things have been with them you know scored over 60 goals considered just 14 and they are unbeaten in all competitions with the fullbacks of these teams actually doing the wonders for them you need to talk about Alex Grimado and also Jeremy Freepong and alongside the forward uh, man himself uh, that's a uh, Victor Boniface who is the highest uh, goal scorer for the team so do you feel that these two teams can one of them or even the two of them probably can actually be the Montpellier of their league or the Leicester City of the league <laughs> uh, like we said it's still a uh, early days and I mentioned the fact that for, for you to win the league in any country you need luck you have to battle with injuries uh, you, also, you need quality in your team if you look at Girona for example I don't think they can withdraw the pressure in in La Liga if you compare their squad to what you have in Real Madrid and Barcelona even in Atletico Madrid it's going to be a difficult uh, uh, thing for them to do fine they are not playing hero they have the edge but when it comes to the crunch we saw that with us now in the Premier League last season. When it gets to the crunch, you understand. When the pressure sets in, it might be difficult for them to to cope. For Bayer Leverkusen, I think it's achievable for them. If they can ward off the threats from Bayern, uh, who does Bayern? You understand, Bayern Munich, you understand. They have quite a number of good players in their team. And they have an experience, well, a rookie manager in uh, Xavier Alonso, but he, he won it all, he saw it all in his playing days. days. So, they have been doing well so far in the Bundesliga, and I believe they can probably win the title yes, this they, season. They can, the yes, yes, they really. I'm also rooting for them, and uh, probably also Girona because don't really like the three horse race, you know, in uh, Atletico Madrid, the Real Madrid, and also uh, Barcelona. You know, I just need, you know, we just want yeah. fresh, you know, just like the Leicester City. You know, no one actually predicted them to go all the way to win in the Premier League in 2015-16 uh, season. So if Girona can actually pull off that stunt, I think it's, you know, it will be somewhat of a motivational factor for all other uh, clubs in the Spanish La Liga. So uh, viewers, this is where we will be drawing the curtain as far as this episode is uh, concerned. We'll see you same time next week. Uh, bye for now.